sounds like the uh, audience wants to hear from Malik Ma Majmudar from Excel uh, Digital Health Foundry um, and MGH uh, Digital Transformation Lab. He's here to talk to us about hacking medicine. And you'll also see him slightly later uh, in about nine minutes <laughs> as the moderator. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. So it's great to be here. I'm actually pitching in uh, for Zen Chu as well, who's actually founder of Hacking Medicine, which is a student-led -like, student organization out of MIT, just founded about five years ago now. Uh, and really we'll be talking about kind of this explosion of uh, interest in healthcare hackathons. So just off the bat, how many people have heard of healthcare hackathons or actually been to one? Uh, so not, okay, so about a third or less, which is great. So hopefully this will be interesting to you guys. Um, okay, that's not how it's supposed to go. <laughs> Do you know? It's like, there you go. So as you probably heard earlier in the afternoon, there is no better time in the history of the world to be a healthcare entrepreneur than now. Just given the healthcare landscape and the healthcare reform and the emerging technology, right? So, but the key thing that we wanted to focus on with hacking medicine specifically was put a set of new, new fresh eyes on the problem. So this idea of outside and innovation, a crowdsource innovation, how do you get people from diverse backgrounds and diverse skill sets to attack the traditional healthcare problems uh, and to solve really interesting and important healthcare problems. So what does a medical or healthcare hackathon really look like? And this is an example of what's called the grand hack that happens in the spring every year, which is really around was over 300 people that attended the healthcare event at MIT Media Lab. And really what we try to do in terms of inclusion criteria is really uh, diversify the audience to a third physicians, residents or fellows, about a third engineers, hardware, software, computer science, and a third entrepreneur. So really the community and the student groups itself. So it's a very diverse set of people that attend these events. And the goal really is to engage the community and teach the, the audience a process by which to address healthcare issues. And we start with really this idea of open, open innovation, right? The most important part, at least what I've learned as a clinician and for these hackathons is to start to really focus in on the problem at hand. How do you actually identify a real pain point? And one of the lessons you learn early on is there are a lot of pain points that get verbalized in this event, but really when you get down to focusing it down, people are usually intent to give solutions to the problems instead of actually identifying and verbalizing the actual pain point. So the students really learn how to actually phrase the problem statement and actually do a pitch. Uh, and really the more important, the next important thing is empathy for the user. How do you actually understand the pain point for the end user itself? How do you position yourself in their shoes to address the issues at hand? Then you go on to obviously, you know, diverse set of teams, engineers, doctors, entrepreneurs, crazy ideas, a lot of long nights. Uh, and then within 48 hours, you end up with surprisingly advanced prototypes. <laughs> whether it be software solutions like mobile applications or actual hardware 3D printed prototypes of devices. And it's incredible if you attend one of these events how much gets done in 48 hours. And the goal really is to accelerate the process of concept and ideation to actual venture uh, uh, generation. So like I said, the real goal here really is open innovation, but also open the universities and academia to industry needs. So over the last five years, this started out as a student-led event. I would say the last 12 months or so, they've done hackathons in 14 different countries and for over 25 different corporations. And there's a tremendous interest from large and small companies to actually do this sort of process within the organization or open source to learn about rapid acceleration of ideas and translation of ideas into actual potential solutions or ventures. Um, one of the key points, uh, for this process to work really well is that we defer all the questions around IP and venture and equity to the end. Because the, the real goal is to just get a diversity of people together and work on a problem without thinking about all the other issues. Because the reality is uh, ideas are just 1%, it's 99% execution. And really the goal of the weekend is to get the teams together to work on important problems and not worry about um, the commercialization part just yet. So in terms of the process, like I said, the idea is to accelerate the process and it's just the beginning, right? So of course, a lot more work to be done before we actually generate a commercial venture. One thing I'll mention, which I think somebody mentioned earlier, you know, the traditional model of business generation revolves around where, where at MIT, right? 
technology invention. It's technology IP risk first, and then you move on to regulatory and then market risk. One of the key things we try to teach is the reverse order here. That market risk in this healthcare environment is actually the most important risk. It's market adoption, clinical adoption, consumer adoption. And technology risk is actually lower, at least in this digital health kind of framework that we're operating in. Uh, and this idea of planning in reverse, but then executing forward is actually a really interesting lesson to learn. And it helps you accelerate the entire process significantly. Uh, you know, if you think about the, dig the world of digital healthcare, the whole idea is how do you scale medicine in the 21st century, right? How do you actually take the complex diagnostic, treatment, pharma, all these ideas and de-skill it in a way that consumers or role providers that are different than doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners can actually do the same job at the same level or higher quality using technology and enabling technologies. So really what we try to teach in this, in this kind of process is how to create new experiences, new services, technology enabled services, how do you find excess capacity in the healthcare system, which is a big issue right now, right? And then patient engagement, of course, is a major, major goal for uh, many companies. So just I'll wrap up here with a couple of slides. Really, so the focus is on needs identification and then work on potential business models and then save the solution design and testing to beyond the hackathons. And as you'll realize, one of the gaps here, of course, for project teams is how do you move beyond the hackathon into value generation for commercial ventures. And recently, for this reason, we actually spun out Hacking Medicine into a nonprofit institute just about three months ago, the Hacking Medicine Institute, where we really will focus on this idea of how do you prove value and economic value uh, for the field of digital health. So that's coming up. So last but not least, I have 30 seconds. Uh, the three big things, pitches. Everybody learns how to actually do a good elevator pitch, like we heard earlier today from all these companies here. Uh, rapid prototyping using this paper. And finally, demonstration projects within 48 hours. And this is probably the biggest success story for Hacking Medicine. This is a company that came out of a hackathon less than two years ago, and now is worth, just got raised the last round of funding at a valuation of about 500 million, I think, and it's PillPack. And it was voted as the 25 best inventions in 2014. Uh, and that literally, that, what you see there, breakfast, lunch, dinner for medication, uh, multi-dose medication, is exactly what their product looks like today. And it came out of that hackathon. So great things can happen over a weekend. Um, I'll end there. So thank, you. Note, thank you. Thank you.